In June of 2015, we had something that was very disruptive happen at our ministry building headquarters, and we had an arson. We're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about when we made a move into a new building, it caused us to go out and have to buy a bunch of new furniture. And we discovered something in doing that about an organization that we'd never seen before. Find out what we discovered and how it pushed us to think critically about our organization. I'm Jeff Eckert. I'm Jason Brewer. And this is The Thought Factory. The Thought Factory podcast is brought to you by Never the Same, cultivating students through biblical discipleship and spiritual disciplines using theology, community, and technology. Learn more at neverthesame.org. We were asked many times by multiple merchants, what do you do? What's never the same? And all of us on staff were unable to answer clearly, what do we do? What is never the same? We would fumble through answers. We would give answers that were vague. We were giving answers that would be like, we are an events company that cater to youth and I believe that was exactly the answer that I would give. <laughs> so we had all these answers all across the board, and that caused us to sit down and say, okay, let's talk about who we are. Let's talk about how we explain ourselves. Let's talk about defining verbally so that we can we can tell people so that they can understand. Because the name of organization catches people off guard, and they always ask us, well, what's that, and what do you do, and who are you? And And so we had that conversation to sit down and say, this is how we answered that question. And Jason, I'm going to ask you right now on the spot, what is never the same? We are a national youth ministry organization. Okay, I'll give you your five bucks later. Very good. That that was our short answer. Now we have a vision statement, a mission statement. That's worth 20 bucks if you can answer. Yeah. So in the process of doing that, what we discovered is we needed to sit down, have this conversation, to be able to articulate in an easy, simple, understandable, and often succinct way of what never the same really is. We can be very vague in our faith and explaining our faith. And when somebody asks, well, why do you believe in Jesus? Our answers may not be clear. And so it is important to have a clear reason for the hope that we believe in. And so that is why we are talking about sharing our faith today. So in this episode, We're continuing this conversation. Is Jesus too PC for Gen Z? And we're going to hear from a student at the end of this podcast and their response to this concept of sharing their faith. And it's an incredible outcome to this student's story. So you you definitely want to stick around to hear that. If you didn't listen to the last episode, we want to encourage you to go back and listen to that. It's a really good one. And there's some good information, especially when it it comes to research research on what students are saying to us about evangelism and about sharing their faith. Today's last episode of the season three, and we are starting season four in February. So if you are listening and you want to follow us, you can find us on iTunes and you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on neverthesame.org slash blog. You can find us, but there's going to be a little break between season three and season four. If you go to Facebook and you check us out at Never the Same, you can find links to all the things we're talking about. And Jason mentioned the companion blog, which is always good. And in this particular episode, there's going to be a lot of video content we're attaching to this particular companion blog that goes with this episode. So we want to encourage you again, neverthesame.org slash blog. All the content that we are talking about today, you will be able to find the video content at that blog site and teaches about the concept, the four. The four is something that we have come across as an evangelistic tool to help students share their faith in a very simple four icons that uh, associate with the gospel and scripture and really allows a student or anybody to lead somebody else into a conversation about God and asking them, will they follow Jesus by the end of the conversation? It's a really simple tool, and we we're really excited to talk about it today. We found out about it because a friend of ours was helping us as we surveyed the landscape of what's available out there. And I, I want to mention again, it was mentioned at the end of the last uh, episode, but Dare to Share is an incredible resource when it comes to evangelism. And as we we're looking at all the resources out there, we stumbled upon this one, and it happened to fit just within the format for us that we needed for our summer events called NTS Camp. So as we as we did that, we found this thing called The Four, 
and you're going to hear exactly what that is here in a second. But as we discovered what it was, we felt like it really worked and fit, and we wanted to try it out this summer. At NTS Camp, we like to take a hands-on approach with a lot of faith material, not just teach, but help them learn and experiment and grow and try things out. So we're able to do that all summer with thousands of students, and we want to just express our support for this really simple concept called the Fort. We're not getting paid. There's nothing financial attached here. We just believe in it. And we did something, Jason, you did something in part of what we prepared for students that we'd never done before at NTS Camp as far as the content delivery. I don't know what you're Do you talking. remember what that was? Uh, having students teach it? Oh, right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the first time, we had students teach the content at camp. Instead of using adults to teach content or be a part of the video stuff that we do at camp, we decided to approach three students to to hand over this project and say, we want you to teach the concept of sharing your faith with the entire network of NTS. So we had three students to join us in our studio and recorded a dozen videos that was shown all summer at NTS camp on the concept of the four. And we, we got the permission from the guys, the four, they were really open-handed about it because they just are excited about the kingdom work that happens be, through the four, through sharing our faith. And so they they blessed the production of this and um, we were able to utilize the branding, the, the content. We developed more of the content, the teaching of it, but these students were able to go through the teaching. It was just a really unique aspect to the program. And it really worked well. And these students did an incredible job. All those videos are going to be available to you for free if you'd like to use them. So as you listen to this episode and if you listen to the last one and you want to get your students more engaged in what we feel like is a very, very current way of, of students being able to share the gospel and to share their faith and the love of God in their language today that speaks to students, and we know this is working so if you want to do that, that's available on that blog post. So neverthesame.org slash blog. All the videos are there. You can access them for free and use it. And if you have any questions about that, we'd love to talk to you about it. Get a hold of us. We'd love to explore that more with you. It is exclusive to those who listen to the podcast and read the blog. To anybody else, it is not free of charge. There you go. So it's a gift from us to you Yeah, for thank- our devoted listeners. That's right. Thank you for listening. So as we develop this content, we learn more about what the four really is. And what it is, it's it's nothing brand new, but it's concepts put in visual form, which we, again, feel like speaks to today's uh, culture and language. Now, I know for me, I learned a lot of methodologies. I've learned several about uh, how to share my faith verbally. But what I love that's unique about the four is the visual aspect to it so that if I remember the visual, then I can remember the concept. Just like we talked about at the beginning where we needed to be clear about the vision or what we do as never the same, this clarifies our faith in very simple symbols, but also simple statements. And the first one is a heart, a heart symbol. You can remember the heart and all it is is God loves me. The next icon is a division symbol. So think of math. Think of a division sign, and that just means we have sinned, and because of that sin, that separated us from God. The third symbol is Jesus died for me, and the symbol is a cross. Really easy to remember because the cross is representative of our Christian faith. And then the last icon of the four is a question mark, and that's this idea of I need to follow Jesus. Will I choose to follow him? There's that question. What will you do with this information? So those four symbols, a heart, a division sign, a cross, and a question mark, that's it. And you teach those concepts, you help students to understand it, and then they're able to share their faith. So Jason, you had a great conversation with the founder, and in our next segment, we're going to hear that conversation. Hey, I'm Justin Warrens, and I am on staff at a church in Metro Detroit, and I joined up with 
Never the Same camp about five years ago when I was a youth pastor at this church, and I have loved our experience there for our students and our leaders, the partnership that we have formed, the momentum that we have gained in our ministry, uh, not just in the summer, but throughout the year has been catalytic. We love how NTS pours into our leaders and our students, and that as we join with NTS together, we come back uh, ignited for our school year. Even things like CYC, which is Claim Your Campus, has been an incredible way to see our student leaders grow in their faith and increase in their prayer life inside of their schools. So uh, as a church that has a movement uh, of a growing uh, connection of young uh, students on a multi-site campus, it has been a gift to us. Hello. Well, good morning. Good morning, uh, yeah. Or good afternoon for you, right? Already afternoon. All right. Well, good to see you again. Yeah. It's always good to have a reason to Skype. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I am talking to Boppy Andreas Bopart, I guess. Everyone calls good. you. Good. Well everyone, done. <laughs> everyone calls you Boppy, except for your yeah. mother. Uh, so I yeah. Hear, uh, she still keeps going on with Andreas. <laughs> And uh, you are the founder of The Four, and many listeners may already know what The Four is, but let's start off with uh, what The Four is and how it got started. Oh, The Four is something very simple and uh, very powerful. I mean, um, The Four is, for me, it's the, it's the very core of the gospel, the, the long story of God shortened down to four simple icons. Bill Bright, the founder of Crew, came up with The Four Spiritual Laws. I mean, they went to all the world and these four icons are just a visual and modern form of this powerful message uh, that there is a God that loves us so much that there is brokenness and separation between me and him because of sin that Jesus paid at the cross for everything and that it's up to me if I want to come back into this unconditional love that's the four for for many years I was looking for something very sneezable because I realized that there are so many so many young Christians, they are not able to talk about their faith. They are not able to talk about um, what they believe. If they started talking, it was always this very weird Christian uh, Hebrew language. <laughs> Nobody understands. And so um, I started looking for something very easy, that uh, catchy, that people can say, oh, I know what I believe and I'm able to share it. And then we... Um, um, saw some people who used the four spiritual laws in with with that three icons the heart and the cross and the question mark and what we did we added this um, separation icon the um, I was a mathematic teacher um, so uh, the division <laughs> symbol this, yeah yeah the division symbol so um, so this completed the four I think it's three years ago or something how did you get so passionate about it? like what's your background in, in faith I'm passionate because um, because when I was young I grew up uh, in, with the Bible in my diapers and when I was young for me somehow I I thought we have to evangelize and people around me they are some some kind of victims to to my my faith. And for me, it was so releasing when I realized that there is this unconditional love for me. And when I start love, my God, that's, I mean, evangelization is all about loving God. I personally, I love God so much that I can't stay quiet. I, I want, I don't want to evangelize my friends. I want that they experience the same amazing love of God. Um, and so uh, that's why I started being passionate about um, about this this um, gospel, this yeah, this core of the gospel. Now you said you were in Switzerland. What's the experience of the four been for you in Europe? It's like like an explosion happened. Hmm. I mean, we um, we started it, and and within two years we had some hundred thousand wristbands out we could train at um i speak often at conferences we could train really uh, some conferences ten thousand young people uh, uh, to, uh, with the four with the wristbands they 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 uh, took it and they went home and a family were uh, asked them what are you wearing or the teacher was asking us at the classroom a teacher was asking a friend of mine what are you wearing and she was uh, saying oh it's it's my faith it's what i believe and so so we we have 
so many. Every every week, I got um, not just from Europe, from all over the world. I got message people who shared the gospel, and they were surprised by themselves because they say, "I'm not a, an evangelist, but I was able to share the gospel with someone." So um, this is amazing. We've gotten connected in this past year because at NTS camp, we wanted to share the four concept, the method to all the students, the three thousand plus students or so. And we have seen a huge response. We have seen students commit to the next 12 months having conversations about their faith using the four. Wow, so good. And so they are excited. We've heard stories about students that are just eager to tell their families, their friends about their faith. And because the four has made it so simple and easy to understand, easy to flow through, and easy to use in a conversation. I would be interested in, in knowing what are people's responses to Jesus in Europe once they hear about the four or how somebody uses the four to talk about their love for God. People in Europe are quite postmodern or hypermodern. I don't know how we call them now. Um, they don't like institutions, so they don't like the church. They don't like authorities, so they don't like the church. They don't like absolute truth, so they don't like the church. But but still, Jesus is highly respected because he was he was good and he he said good things. He did good things, and um, so if if they don't like the bride, like the church, we should just get them into personal contact with the groom because the bride sometimes can look quite ugly. I know because I'm married to a bride and she was very beautiful, but sometimes in the morning she is not so beautiful, like myself. So um, we should help them to get in contact with Jesus. And what I experience is these young people in, in Europe often are not interested in how things are working. It's it's I call them an iPhone or a smartphone generation. My father was interested in everything. Why is, is it working? He put things in parts, but uh, I don't do that. If my smartphone works, I'm, ha I'm happy. So people, young people, if they realize that faith is working, if Jesus is working in their life, they are happy and they want it. So what we have to do is give them experience with Jesus, real experience where they can encounter the, the love of God, pray together. This is, is, I think it's the most powerful thing to pray with people or pray for them, together with them, so that they experience the love of God is real. And then they are interested in, oh, wow, I want to know this Jesus personally. Is there any recent stories that you have come across about a friend of yours or what you've heard about someone using the four to share and the response that occurred? Yeah, I mean, uh, my personal recent story was this, uh, that I was driving um, at a train. In Switzerland, we often use public transportation. So I was driving in a train and a, a woman was uh, sitting next to me, uh, opposite to me. Um, we had, I think we, we didn't talk for three hours because in Switzerland, you don't, uh, you are not allowed to talk in train. You just stay quiet. That's how we Swiss people do. So um, we are not so American. I mean, <laughs> um, so we were sitting there, but she had to stare at my smartphone cover for, for three hours and on my smartphone cover is, is the four. So she was, after three hours, she was very curious. What, what's this, what's the four about? So, so she went uh, home and went to the internet and to the website, the four, she heard the gospel and she um, connected through the internet uh, with me. Uh, I mean, very simple, just, just wow. Um, happened. Wow. Well, I want to ask the last question, which is how would you encourage other people to just initiate a conversation that leads to sharing their faith? I would encourage people not to strongly initiate this kind of conversations, um, like looking at others like a victim and say, now um, I want to uh, tell them the gospel. I mean, what we need to do is we need to have a conversation personally with God all the time. We have to be in love with God. And out of that, we start loving people so that they can see Christ in us. And then we are able to share. It's really it's important to be interested in, in the people. It's interested in friends, in the life of friends, in the life of neighbors. Uh, and then start sharing when there is a point where we realize, oh, now they are interested. I can share what's on my heart because they, I'm interested in their lives as well. That's great. Is there any other thoughts that you want to share? 
I would encourage young people to be be brave. Life is too short not to be brave. We we often fear so many things. We fear the reaction of people. We fear the, the reaction of friends. We fear to speak in public. We fear everything. But um, I would say Jesus is fear-free zone. He is fear-free th- zone. That doesn't mean we are not allowed to have fears. Uh, he said it's totally human to fear. But um, some fears are helpful because this can save our lives. But some fears are just blocking us um, to live the life into its fullness. And so um, I want to encourage people to to really to to break through this fear with the power of Jesus and, and then start speaking and loving and living very brave, not with 70 or 80 years when they are through all their personal processes already with 14 15 16 start living a a, um, a brave life for jesus well thanks boppy on behalf of us here at never the same we are encouraged by your work with the four and what you do in switzerland as well as all across europe and thank you for allowing us to spread it to america and and be so open-handed with it so we're very grateful. Same. You're doing a great job. Thanks so much. Well, we'll talk soon again. Yes. Talk Goodbye. Later. Goodbye, Bobby. My name is Bella Brooks from Mallow Junior High. We wanted to highlight Bella's story in this episode because we heard this story shortly after one of the weeks of camp this past summer. Bella is a middle school student in Detroit, Michigan, who shared her faith with a friend by using the four method while traveling on the bus ride home from NTS camp. On my way home from camp, and I was going through Snapchat stories, and I noticed Kayla's, my friend, and I slid up because she was crying, and I was like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And she said, well, I just feel worthless. I don't think I should be here. And I was like, oh, no, that's not good. And then I basically started out with using the four and I asked her, hey, do you have a relationship with God and that kind of thing? And I shared with her. She shared with her friend how she felt after her experience with NTS camp. I had experienced happiness that I've never, ever experienced before. And I felt so full and she wasn't going for it at first, but then I kind of convinced her like god is so good he loves you you're his daughter that kind of thing and i was sad at first when i saw that kind of thing and when she was talking to me but after the whole conversation we went through she was like so excited she was like tell me more i want to know more And I gave her some songs to listen to and she was just in tears and she was happy and she was smiling. And I was so excited that I just shared the love of God with like one of my really close friends. And pretty much ever since then, she's been, she's been way better than she was. And I check up on her every once in a while and she always tells me that she's doing good. I asked Bella what she initially felt when she saw her friend's Snapchat. I was kind of nervous, excited, and kind of sad because of what she, what she had told me. Like I said, she was kind of saying how she felt like nothing was worth anything, that she didn't want to live anymore. So, but I was very nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, how is she going to (laughs) respond? In my conversation with Bella, she admits this was probably the first time that she shared her faith with someone else. So I wanted to clarify the results of her conversation with her friend. Did she receive Christ or was it just kind of you sharing your faith and just she's just doing better? Did she accept Christ? What was the results of that? She did. At the end of the conversation, I said, so do you think you want to have a better relationship or you want to have a relationship with God? And she said, yes. 100% I'm all in. Sharing your faith doesn't have to be complicated. The four makes it really simple. But Bella ends with a word of encouragement to all of us to just go for it, despite the nerves, despite the unknown outcome, 
because someone's life could be on the line. I would say just go for it. I saved someone's life from sharing my faith. So I think if you're on the fence, just do it. Go for it. So as we consider the last episode and this episode as well, this this idea, this question, is Jesus too PC for Gen Z? We've learned from students themselves that they are excited. They're willing. They want to know more, and they're willing to share their faith, and they're not really that afraid of being too offensive. So we want to encourage you in this conversation about evangelism, consider keeping it out there in the forefront of your students. Model it, teach it, help them to know it, and help them to understand how important it is for them to to not only share it in their actions, but also in their words as well. And we think that's where it's going, this balanced approach in taking both and helping students be able to share Christ's love with others. The Thought Factory podcast is brought to you by Never the Same, whose vision is to see new generations transformed in Christ to further the kingdom of God. Learn more at neverthesame.org.